Something I like to do whilst playing video games is take a closer look for some of the less noticeable details, whether that's because they're very well hidden, or small, or just generally unseeable during normal gameplay. One game I missed out when it was first released was Resident Evil 3 Remake, so we're going to go back and visit Raccoon City once again for this one. Oh, and uh, by the way, not all the details in this video are a positive. One in particular is a little more, let's say, pessimistic. Starting off on the title screen for this one, here we can take a good look at Nemesis. And whilst he may need some treatment for these, it's crazy to see each individual nail has its own design. Personally, I think Nemesis is looking pretty badass in this remake. I certainly wouldn't like to see him walking down my street. However, I have seen people on different sites asking why he looks like he's wrapped in bin bags, and I do kind of see what they mean. From a distance, this may be the case. However, taking a closer look reveals he's actually wrapped in what looks like carbon fibre. In fact, getting very close, you can see each individual weave. Pretty cool to think this is what we're seeing wrapped around most of his body then. A more disappointing detail is the generic caution sign on his power limiter. In fact, it took me the best part of 20 seconds of browsing to find what is probably the exact image. After waking up in Jill's apartment, we can find all sorts of images, posters and flyers covering the walls. Plenty to look at then, and some of them are great little easter eggs. Take for instance the fridge magnet that's pointing to the green herbs magnet. Also the infamous four barrel rocket launcher and then going a little further down again we have another green herb which I'm sure needs no explanation. However it was this coupon flyer for Moon's Donuts that made me chuckle the most. Use them while she can as they only last a limmer red time. After waking up from her dream, all seems pretty normal in the seasonings holder. However, if we rewind and go back into the dream sequence, there's something a little more potent than your average salt and pepper. I mean, who doesn't like to give their eggs in the morning that bit of a kick with some scotch whiskey drizzled over them? We're now making our way through Raccoon City, or what we can of it anyway, and it's not long before we encounter our first zombies. And at first it all seemed pretty good. Different models of zombies can be seen climbing over the fence. It got a thumbs up from me. That was until about two minutes later, I was looking around and couldn't help but notice a rather frankly disheartening detail. Now, I did enjoy this remake. Nowhere near as much as the original or Resident Evil 2 remake, admittedly, and I think there are things missing that should have been included. More puzzles would have been nice for a start, and locations such as the park. But it wasn't all that bad. However, I have to agree when players say this was rushed. And this is a detail that kind of backs up that claim. So here we have a small portion of the map, a lot of which can be seen by the player. And it doesn't take long to work out that literally every single zombie that's in this one small section is exactly the same model, simply copied and pasted. Now I'm not saying developers shouldn't use tricks and techniques to save time or memory, that's been going on since the dawn of computer game development, and some of which we've covered on the channel show ingenuity and creativity at its best. But when it's this blatantly obvious, well, I'll let you viewers make your own minds up on this one. On top of the car park roof, just after the helicopter crashes, we get thrown towards a car. Now, in my previous episodes covering behind the scenes of this remake, I did call it Ethan's car, which got quite a few responses from viewers I think I confused not knowing what I was talking about. So, just in case you don't know or haven't played it, here's Ethan's car featured in Resident Evil 7. Dude, it's been three years. I know, I know. Pretty similar, right? In fact, it is the same model of car, only in Resident Evil 7 the paint seems to be somewhat faded. I guess this can be explained as the developers just reusing assets again, though it is a pretty distinct car to use. Or maybe there is something more to it. 
as it's not just the car model that's here. Check out the key from Resident Evil 7. And yep, you guessed it, it is the same key, only the colour is different yet again. Strange they will go to such lengths to change a detail that can't really be seen. I think it's about time we took a closer look at some of the character models, in particular the zombies which are some of the craziest models to take a look at, simply because there's so much going on here compared to the standard character meshes we see in other games. This is mainly of course because as we shoot them they get bullet holes and chunks of flesh fly off. As we go through here you'll probably notice those different layers, from the clothing on the outside to the skin right through to the bone and the meat underneath. Pretty gruesome, but great to get a closer look at. Whilst wandering through the city you'll notice there are a lot of posters to look at. One poster in particular, which I believe is only viewable at the Toy Uncle store, features a video game called Monster Shooter, and it also shows a picture of what looks like the most combined mangled mess of a console I've ever seen, except for the Viewmaster Interactive Vision. Check it out if you don't believe me. So here we have the power and reset buttons from a PlayStation, the power and reset buttons from a NES, the controller from the NES, mixed with the buttons from a GameCube controller, only it looks like they're upside down. Having said that, the good news is at least you'd be able to physically purchase one. Something you may not know is that when picking certain items up, before they go into your inventory, you're looking at a 2D image. Take for instance the tape recorder we find at the hospital. As I move the camera back, you'll see what was the reception room has now turned into a flat background. Then once we place the item into our inventory, the rest of the map loads again. Here it is in slow motion. Most of the parasols we see scattered around near to the outside locations of the clock tower are green. There is only two that are different. One near to where the boss fight takes place with Nemesis, and one quite a distance out of bounds. Both just happen to be attached to hot dog stands. This might just be a coincidence, but from above, these umbrellas look suspiciously like you know what. The last detail I want to show is probably my favourite and is one that you would definitely never get to see under normal circumstances. Whilst making our way through the sewers, we're confronted by this creature, a Hunter Gamma, and normally I wouldn't let this happen but for the sake of the video, let's do this. Now of course the You Are Dead screen stays here until we choose one of the options, but let's say we remove it to see what's behind. Well, when we do, we can find the Hunter Gamma and the map is still loaded, only frozen in time. So the question is, where is Jill now? Has she despawned like you'd probably imagine she would, and 99% of the time you'd be right? But nope, not this time. If we take a look through this thing's giant mouth, which does look pretty awesome anyway, and head down deep into its bowels... Holy crap! Now that's what I call a chill sandwich. So there we go folks, that's what happens when you get eaten by a Hunter Gamma. Kind of freaky. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this one. I will leave links in the description to my previous videos covering behind the scenes of Resident Evil 3 Remake. If you did enjoy the video and you'd like to see more, it would be awesome if you subscribed and don't forget to hit the notification bell too. I'd like to quickly give a shout out to Franz Bomer for his work in making the camera that I mainly used in this one. I couldn't seem to find my own camera scripts that I wrote a while back for this game. I don't know, maybe I deleted them or something, but anyway, this definitely came to my aid and worked fantastically. So, big thank you again. 
Also, thanks as always to my patrons and members. You guys are all awesome and I really appreciate the support. If you have any gaming secrets or general curiosities you think I may be able to help solve, come on Discord, let me know and I'll see what I can do. However, until next time, as always, take care, people.